uh, grab it here. So if you've been following the channel, I've been playing around with Amigar Amos Professional 2.0, and um, actually have a made a video where I compiled the whole um, system or applications set from scratch on um, Windows, and um, then I suddenly started thinking a bit further what would be an absolute minimum configuration if you would like to do something like you'd, you'd like to go into the Amos source code and you'd like to like just extract a, a certain section and customize it and, and then compile it and, and run it. So I'd, what I did is I uh, created a little bit of a um, code skeleton um, in assembler to so picking picking the startup parts from Amos Pro uh, so that you could actually um, then yourself like go on uh, pick and choose and put stuff and there are probably going to be follow up videos on this you know library handling ah different things because uh, actually the Amos Professional is rather interesting because it's kind of like a gold mine of of how how to's for the Amiga platform when it comes to assembler programming and, and also that can be converted to other languages like C. Um, anyway, the um, just a comment I like using um, Microsoft Code, however, uh, and, and and the extensions that it provides. But I do have actually need to uh, <laughs> put in a, a rant section into this video about Microsoft Code. I, um, you know the extensions. Many of them uh, have descriptions that promise functionality that, uh, that in sometimes it doesn't exist or it doesn't work as described. So the, the version that you download, um, yeah, it doesn't actually do what the, the promises say that it does. And, and that leads to me the fact that the, many of the extensions have fallen into a very buggy like there, and we're talking about running it mainly on the Windows platform, but this also applies to the uh, extensions on on Linux or Microsoft Code extensions on Linux. So, and so many of them uh, I could consider very buggy, or and and lots of them have fallen into a state of not being maintained. Uh, one of the most worrying uh, things that I think is really bad is that. Um, uh, the extensions contain a lot of um, binary, often contain a lot of binary content that has no known pedigree. So it's actually very hard to verify that those binaries are, uh, like where, how were those binaries created and then from what source code, where, you know. Um, you know, there's no audit trail that you can follow, you know, at least easily. For some of them it is, of course, clear because they're simple, but the other ones were more complicated. Uh, it gets a bit tricky trying to track. Uh, one of the issues I've been having is that some of the extensions, when you download them, and I get uh, virus scan hits on them. Um, okay, it could be false positive also, but um, I, I usually used uh, several different scanners and, um, yeah, well, yeah, sometimes you get a double confirmation that, that it actually does contain, yeah. or the it, it blocks the extension from loading, you know, blocks the actual like a DLL file or something and blocks it because it says that it has a virus. And uh, I do know that there's been a lot of discussion in the open about the fact that those uh, have to be careful with the extensions. And Microsoft tried to <laughs> basically the way that Microsoft has had is the foot warnings, like you know, are you sure? Do you trust the publisher and you know, all that kind of thing? But not no real validation. <laughs> also, the other annoying thing is that the the uh, Microsoft Code extensions they. Um, Sometimes they conflict with each other. So if you if you load a set of, a set of extensions, then um, in in some cases they can overlap, and, and then they can start doing stuff on top of each other. And it just turns into another other mess. But anyway, so that's um, rant over. So let's um, take a look at this. Um, I'm going to upload the skeleton. Uh, zip make a zip file of this and, and upload it to my github page with a link so you can get it from there but uh, I just thought I'd give a you know a description of what it looks like so let's start from the 
top level. So the only extension I have in this case loader is the um, Motorola 68000 assembly um, extension. And there are lots of other extensions that you can install and, and use, of course, but uh, I found that the, this is like a minimum. What I like to do is to keep the extra, uh, absolute minimum of the extensions and then handle the rest of the stuff um, separately. So if we have a look at the actual folder structure, um, then, uh, let's see. So if you look at my video related to building the almost, then you see that we use this um, VASM uh, assembler compiler. And um, what I've done now is that I've um, extracted the, this is the entry point for Amos Pro, so it's called plus B. <laughs> and then I made a very simple uh, command, uh, uh, command file to actually just um, uh, compile it. So it uses the dev file. So, you, so these are more explained in my video about the Windows compilation. But um, it uses the dev file format. Um, doesn't care about case. Uh, and then it creates hunk executables. And it, and by default, I'm actually creating a list, uh, an assembly list file, which you can remove that if you think it's not needed. And then the output file is, um, as you see here, it um, kicks out the Amos Pro. Omega executable. So if you look at the actual minimum set of files that you need to uh, to run the skeleton, then um, uh, you need to take the same includes that are in the um, video that described the um, Windows com compilation. And then um, I have kept the, ver <laughs> the, the, the version file. And then I've uh, downgraded the Amos includes to only include the, the basic stuff needed to run this example. And then if we look at the actual source here, so uh, as you notice, I have um, also kept the French comments. <laughs> so you can actually match with the original source code. So anyway, this is the actual entry point, and it actually comprises of two hunks, and the first hunk just says jump to cold start. And, and basically the, what's in here is a few variable definitions, uh, constants defined, and then you come to hunk two, and that's the actual where it starts, so it's uh, the cold start. And I haven't brought over any of the, I've only brought over the code, which is required to implement this minimum absolute minimum setup. And then the other thing that I fixed is that <laughs> in the or original uh, Amos Pro it has uh, hard-coded um, values uh, used in the code and the, those I've tried to remove so they're now moved into constants. So anyway we um, save the stack. Let's, see. Uh, let's go through and look at what's of interest. Yeah, it was the, had a hard-coded exec base, so I actually removed that. So basically, you have uh, in Amiga you have the um, uh, execute base, and then based on that you can actually open up other libraries. So we have the um, uh, Amiga DOS library and the Amiga Intuition library. So those I kept, and then. Um, also, there's a bit of logic that uh, uh, checks if it if you started this command or, or started this application from the command line or the workbench. And here it's actually looking, and so I kept that logic also. <coughs> and since I test this from the CLI, so then it's um, automatically it jumps into here. And then I just um, kept this. I added this section here to actually print out. Um, uh, to, uh, yeah, to say hello. And then, um, and then you have this the the actual basic code that's needed to exit cleanly from a CLI execution. So it closes all the libraries, so the exec base and the DOS, and um, mm, oh, what, what did I do here? Uh, for, you know. Uh, Yeah, you 
close the DOS library and and then you close the intuition library and then you need to close you need to exit with a um, non-error exit code if you if you don't have this then you then it will return garbage in, in, in D0 and then you'll get all kinds of weird things on when it actually exits back to the um, command line in, in the army. And um, so the idea is that now what you could do is this is the absolute bottom skeleton so what you could do is that you could actually borrow code and, and, and bring it over from um, from Amos Pro uh, code base or you could act uh, you could add your own stuff so this is also a, a valid basic skeleton for doing um, other Amiga assembler programming uh, and it's the absolute rock bottom minimum configuration and um, if we look at building it um, let's see called skeleton so to build it, it's just to um, that one. So now you can actually see it. So you know, in 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 PowerShell, you you need you need to actually pre put this um, prefix so that it could actually find the command file to execute. So anyway, so here we um, just execute the command file and then that um, kills the old output and then it um, runs the compiler to actually create the new app. And um, what I'll do now is I'll um, start up the emulator uh, because I've got the emulator mapped directly so it points to the um, output directory from um, Microsoft code. So oh, we can actually look here. So then you have here, you, and here you have the actually list assembler listing file. Listing file. If you want to actually have a look at how the code was, the, how the source code was taken, and how it was like processed into um, assembler. So you can actually get all the assembler entries and, and in parallel with the source code. And then here you actually have the binary file. So this is the um, uh, Amiga executable, and we. I'll start up the emulator so we can execute that. So now I started the emulator. I said that then you can see this absolute absolute minimum configuration so that you could actually even consider using some and I mean the idea with this skeleton is that it can you, you build on it so if you if you want to like borrow or test some features from the uh, Amos Pro then it makes the uh, makes the actual startup a little bit easier because now you you end up in a state where you 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 started the Amiga application and you've opened the basic uh, two basic libraries DOS and Intuition, and you actually have an exit path that doesn't crash, and then you you can actually see where you need to insert code, and then of course the you, you can also identify very easily. You can see the code in uh, in uh, that I've used and where it's come from from the um, Amos Pro uh, solution. Oh, anyway, happy hacking.